Welcome to another Retro Shelf video, and once again I'm opening the package from Read Only Memory Books. If you're a fan of the channel you'll have seen me open and look through several of their books before. Uh, this latest one has been delayed a couple of times by printing problems and by shipping issues, but as we take it out of the package, this gorgeous embossed cover, we can see we have like a hurricane, an unofficial oral history of Street Fighter 2. You don't know memory.bg, book number 15, colour gradient on the spine, and barcode on the back. So let's open it up and have a look at it. So once again, you can see it's a gorgeous looking hardback book from Read Only Memory. Funded by a Kickstarter campaign. And there were various perks on the campaign, including a vinyl album. And you can see here we got embossed diagrams of some of the special moves. So let's open up the book and have a look inside. So, like a hurricane, unofficial oral history of Street Fighter 2, written by Matt Leone, published by Read Only Memory. There's the contents and the foreword. James Chen, Street Fighter series commentator. Talking about his history with the game. And then chapter one, Street Fighter. So of course before Street Fighter 2 there was the original Street Fighter arcade game and famously that had pressure sensitive buttons so the harder you hit it the harder the punch or kick but that caused reliability problems and you can see we've got people inside Street Fighter development Capcom Japan in the US managers in the US there talking about it Capcom declined an interview request with founder Kenzo Tsuchimoto for this book. We are unable to locate SNK founder Akichi Kawasaki. So, composer, editor of a magazine, technical manager, Street Fighter 2 planner Nikiro Yasuda, and then Street Fighter 2. Artist Nagira Yasuda showed up to a Capcom job interview dressed in pyjamas and a tie. Yasuda got the job. Of course. You can read more about there about making the game, the concept. And you see the notes there in red from the editor adding in additional information and background detail. Yeah, and the quotes from lots of people involved. Street Fighter 2. Got a large chapter on that. Obviously, glitches in the software. Sheng Long. And then chapter three, talking about Fatal Fury, SNK's rival. Became an important rival to Capcom. Talking about competing with Street Fighter 2. Then on to the Champion Edition. Introduce the two often requested changes. You let the players select their boss characters and let them use the same character as your opponent. So that brought in colour changes as well, the palette swaps. So that's the Champion Edition talking about there. Ian Rose, General Counsel, Capcom USA. Interviewed. And then Chapter 5, Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting. It's talking about the unofficial clones and variations. So they followed up. Street Fighter 2 
Champion Edition with Turbo Hyper Fighting with the Turbo Speed. Again, we're looking inside the development, what was happening. Hyper Fighting Success. Talk about sales. Bringing the games home. So now we're talking about conversions. The Super NES debut because it appeared on that console first. Then the Champion Edition came to Mega Drive. Talking about the box art. Mike McGinty, Chris Tang there. Scott Smith, manager at USA. Console success. Ebb and flow. So, challenges from that. Content controversy. And talking about the ESRB and software ratings. Capcom versus Data East. Lawsuit about how similar a certain game was. Super Street Fighter 2, the next big upgrade, which of course introduced four new characters. And again, talking about how the changes are made, content that was cut. Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, again, the revision to the board in the arcade version to make it faster four new characters and Akuma was added talking again about the Shen Long rumour Dark Stalker so effectively a spin-off series trip to Comic-Con A new art style for Darkstalkers. Darkstalkers, the animated series. And another closely related game, X-Men Children of the Atom. Start of a, another franchise. How it came about. Mishitani's Choice, two games in parallel. Controlling the Madness and how it set up the Capcom and Marvel relationship. Street Fighter Alpha. A lot of text, a lot of interesting inf information from inside. Dan Hibiki there mentioned, a dramatic battle. Meeting demand. Street Fighter the movie, in terms of there was both the spin-off movie and then the game based of it. So a trip to Australia. Was it originally called Street Fighter 3? A quiet launch. Street Fighter EX. Shitani leaves Capcom and the series shifts into 3D. It's the first of the polygon based games. And then officially Street Fighter 3. Talking about how well that sold. Blade Redemption, Capcom versus SNK. So taking characters from both companies' rosters, turn and put them into a single fighting game. Capcom fighting all stars. Moving on. Cancels fighting all stars. Consoles got new games. Capcom itself moving on to Resident Evil series. People leaving from the original. Development team. Then we have a section of biographies on the people involved. That's Motu there. 
Shiyama, Carter, Ian Rose, Scott Smith, Jeff Walker, Kerry Suda. I do like the little illustrations of us in a character. Way. And then guest speakers, various people involved, tournament player turned commentator, James Chen there. Little garden ahead of Capcom USA. Chris Tang, famous player. Ken Williams, editor at Electronic Game Monthly. And then reporting notes. An edited and expanded collection of articles that appeared on Vox Media's games and entertainment website Polygon in 2014, 2020 and 2021. Spent years researching the story. And editing the text. And the game titles in here reflect the English versions and not the Japanese. Job titles often in terms of past roles so what they were at the time of that game so then the end matter here we have a list of contributors interpreters and translators and then the backers on kickstarter so there these are in alphabetical order and i should be able to find my name there You can see quite a lot of people backed it and then talking about the various pages written by Matt Leone, commissioning editor Darren Wall, design Callan McIntosh, tutorial canon with the illustrations set in LL Bradford, line two. And there we have it. So that is like a hurricane. An all unofficial oral history of Street Fighter 2, available now from Read Only Memory Books. Comment below, what's your favourite Street Fighter game? What's your favourite conversion to the home consoles? What's your What game would you like to see a book on? And is there any particular book you'd like to see covered in the retro shelf? Like and share this video, subscribe, and... Uh, Please support me on Ko-fi to help me make more content. Keep it retro.